Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. We're going to be looking at Active Directory and laying some very important foundations. Our purpose in this demonstration presentation is making Active Directory interesting, engaging, practical, but technical, slowly building our understanding of the complex scope of what Active Directory has become. To understand the importance of Active Directory, you've got to step back in time and look at where business and industry and computers were at in the early 1990s. Computers at that point were peer-to-peer -peer work group. There was no centralized management. We were still using coax cable and BNC T connectors to connect all our networks. They were generally classroom to classroom. We didn't have the ability to expand our network beyond, beyond one single classroom. Large corporations were using thick net instead of coax cable, and they were able to do a more effective job of networking large floors and multiple floors. Every computer and server was managed individually, and companies that began to push 50 to 100 plus computers were really experiencing difficulty with this model. There was definitely a need for centralized management of network objects, hosts, digital objects, and at the beginning, Novell brought out their Novell directory services, but it just never took off. There was behind the scenes the X.500 directory standards that was being developed by the telephone companies. Now, a directory is organizing digital objects in a very logical way and relationship in a database. Now, if you're thinking in 1990, the idea of a directory being the solution to centralizing management networks, that was a real off-the-wall idea. But let's take a look at this picture on this slide. If we take the elements of our network, let's just take users, and over here we've got users, and then if we break down users into the accounting department, human resource department, engineering department, on and on and on, then we could break down just the accounting department into individual users. They've got 15 people in the accounting department. And then each user has username, a password, a telephone number. At that time, we didn't have any such thing as a cell phone number, supervisor's name, etc., etc. This, you can start seeing the metadata of every object in your directory and their interrelationship with each other. Pump it into a database, build a set of protocols in which it can communicate out to all these computers, servers, networking devices, you've got what is the basis for a centralized management system. Now, in an organization, you've got a lot of physical objects. You've got computers, servers, storage, switches, routers, firewalls, printers, cloud devices. And in an organization, you have a lot of digital objects. These are things you can't touch. User accounts, associated metadata, computer accounts and associated metadata, policy, security, single sign-on, cloud digital objects. Now, Active Directory server database can manage up to 2.15 billion objects. Azure Active Directory can manage about 50,000 objects. Notice there's a big difference between Azure Active Directory, which is being hosted in the cloud, and Active Directory, which is hosted on a server. Active Directory was released with Windows Server 2000 in 1999. Now, just having a database with lots of objects in it and protocols does not give you centralized management. But look at this diagram. Look at these powerful services that plug into Active Directory. Group policies with its granular control over users, computers, servers, 
allowing administrators to manage your Windows update using the Windows Server Update system. You have certificate services that allow you to deploy certificates throughout your organization, even in a multinational corporation. You have rights management that allows you to control your documents, your intellectual property in a much more granular way. Authentication services give you single sign-on. Infrastructure services allow you to control the relationship between objects on your network. You literally could spend two hours on each of these services that plug into Active Directory. This is a great slide because it really gives you a picture of what connects into Active Directory. We have email systems, applications, which are very important, giving you that single sign-on capability, even with applications, firewall services, network devices, Windows servers, Windows clients, Windows users. It gives you a comprehensive control and management system over your network. Now, in today's environment, Microsoft really is pushing you to connect your local Active Directory servers to Azure Active Directory. That's its goal for today's enterprise. Now, this is my Azure Active Directory web interface to my home network. I can connect this directly to my local home Active Directory network. One of the most serious problems facing Active Directory today is that it's a major attack vector from malicious actors. If you take over a company's Active Directory admin account, you own that company. If you're responsible for Active Directory in your company, you must start learning the basic procedures for protecting your Active Directory against criminals. Even though in a domain, we primarily use domain accounts, domain admin accounts, domain user accounts, when criminals attack your Active Directory, they typically go after a local admin account. So we create a group policy object that says that a local admin account is denied access to any computer from the network. We deny the local account from logging on as a batch job. We deny the local account to log on as a service. We deny it to log on locally. We deny it to log on through remote desktop services. This is a fundamental protection from a local account to your Active Directory domain accounts. So we take these user rights highlighted in red and we add the local administrator to all of these and we deny the local administrator the ability to do this. We're not impacting domain accounts. We're impacting local computer accounts. Another important protection to your Active Directory is making sure that all your local admin password are changed on a regular basis. And you can get Microsoft's LAPS, Local Administrator Password Solution, and it will randomize all your local admin passwords on a regular basis. This is a very important protection. Now, obviously, we could spend a lot more time just on Active Directory security, but we've got other things to cover. Let's lay down the concepts of forest, domains, and admin control. When you install Active Directory domain services for the first time in your home network or in your business, you are going to build this domain structure. It's called a forest root domain. That is the beginning of Active Directory. It doesn't matter whether you have subdomains. Here we see Division 3, another subdomain, Division 2, another subdomains. It doesn't matter how many or how little, your first one will be a forest root domain. The forest sets the security boundaries for Active Directory. You'll have enterprise administrator, a domain administrator, and schema administrators for that forest root domain. Now, Microsoft allows you to add another service called Active Directory Federation Services. This allows better connectivity to cloud services. In most cases, your main concern will be Active Directory domain services. That's going to be AD. Now, when you begin the process of installing Active Directory on a server, you will go to Add Roles and Features, and you'll notice they're checked by Active Directory Domain Services. Notice that automatically DNS Service 
will be added and file services will be added to your domain controller. DNS is integrated into Active Directory. This DNS is not like a DNS server on the internet. The DNS server in Active Directory is primarily for Active Directory domain only so that client servers can find resources each other on the network using their own internal DNS server. This DNS service does not share to the internet what it knows about your internal domain. You can see in the dialog box where we're installing Active Directory, we also could install Active Directory Federation services as well as Active Directory Lightweight Directory services, which is primarily for applications. It's very wise once you're hired within a company. You may not have a lot of exposure to Active Directory, but by the time you get in and employed as an IT professional in a company, you need to start digging in and understanding not only Active Directory, but how your company implements it. There are lots of ways in designing Active Directory. You can have a, a forest root domain. You can have multiple subdomains. You can have external domains that you connect through the forest. There's lots of ways of designing it. It can be as simple, and that's really the recommended. Keep your domain design as simple as possible. Active Directory is capable of handling an enormous amount of objects and managing an enormous amount of objects. Orange County Public Schools is the ninth largest district in the U.S. You can see they have over 205 schools, 206,000 students, 24,000 employees. I can tell you they have lots of computers and servers, and their single domain is more than adequate for this very large school district. Again, your Active Directory could be very complex because it's multinational, spans the globe. It depends on your corporate philosophy, your enterprise structure. Many other factors come in to how you design Active Directory. So let's get practical. If I'm going to install Active Directory, I need two servers minimum, always two domain controllers. You can have more if that makes sense for your organization. Now, once you take a Windows server and you add Active Directory, it now becomes a domain controller. You should not have any other software on your domain controller except Active Directory. Now, Microsoft recommends that you use Windows Core for Active Directory install. Now you can run Active Directory in virtual machines. I run my home lab on two domain controllers on a virtual machine. But be sure you look at best practices. When you do run Active Directory on virtual machines, make sure you do your homework. So understanding forests, domains, and trees. So why, when we installed our first domain, why did it have to be a forest root domain? The reason why is because many companies many times purchase or integrate into another company. So for example, Quest.com. If it goes out and purchases oneidentity.com, Microsoft builds a mechanism to connect this DNS space with its domain and tree, it's got some subdomains, and bring it into your domain, quest.com. That is what a forest is for. So you always start with a forest root domain. And here you notice we built in Quest, we've got two subdomains and their relationship is what is known as a tree. Oneidentity.com has two subdomains. That relationship to the root domain is a tree relationship. When I take quest.com and oneidentity.com and I combine them together in an active directory, I now have a forest. It is very important to understand that Active Directory is built on top of DNS. The whole concepts of DNS, of having top-level domain names, then you have subdomain names such as sales.quest.com, and we have hr.quest.com are a part of the DNS name quest.com, which is a top-level. Everything about DNS integrates into Active Directory, so all domains are built on DNS namespaces. All Active Directories begin with a forest root domain, which in this case is quest.com, and you can build as many subdomains as you want. It's not always desirable to do that. We're going to see, keep it simple, as much as possible. Another important concept is a domain controller. Remember, we like two in each domain, and we have three domains. A domain controller is authoritative only in the domain that it's in. 
So a domain controller in Quest.com has no authority in sales.quest.com. Whatever domain your domain controller is in, that's where it's authoritative only. We've also looked at the concept of Active Directory trees, where we have a top-level domain, in this case, contoso.com, and then we have a subdomain, us.contoso.com, and ohio.us.contoso.com. This relationship is called a tree. Okay, Mr. Vanderpool, if domain controllers are only authoritative in each of these domains, how does the whole thing work together? Ah, that's where a forest comes in. And if you'll notice the global catalog, you actually add a server in each of these domains with what is known as a global catalog. And this global catalog will go in and pull information out of each of these domains so it's available to anybody in these domains. Now back to this picture again, because we need to understand that forests, although we've already talked about, allow a company to bring in another company if they acquire another company, but it's really about a discontinuous DNS name. So quest.com is a discontinuous DNS name from oneidentity.com. A forest allow discontinuous DNS name spaces to connect together and trust each other. That's another important element of a forest. Here's another example of that. Here we have contoso.com and a subdomain. And then we have fabricam.com and a subdomain. A forest allows these two discontinuous DNS namespaces to join together, build trust relationships. And again, global catalog will be provided so that we can accumulate data out of each domain so they'll all work together. Domain controllers are still authoritative only in the domain that they're located in. Now, do you need all these trees and these extra subdomains? No. Where possible, keep your domain a single domain. A root forest domain, that's it. Many large companies have this as their Active Directory model. Now, time synchronization is very important in Active Directory. We take our domain controllers, we use NTP protocol, which is network time protocol, and we connect to a time source, some server that gives us an accurate measurement of time. We want all of our clients, all of our servers synced in time. We don't want domain controllers 10 minutes faster than a few clients. That's going to create problems. Now, synchronization on time doesn't mean that we can't have time zones. That's fine, as long as everybody is using the same time source. NTP gives us accuracy up to 10 milliseconds. A new protocol called P2P is giving us accuracy in microseconds. Many corporations buy what's known as network time servers. I'll show a few on the screen. What is the most important thing you need to know how to do in Active Directory? You need to know how to recover and restore your AD to a functional state because you will make mistakes. Some th considerations when you're building your domain controllers. I usually build my domain controllers with three hard drives, a C drive for the operating system, a D drive for the Active Directory database, and then E drive for backup. I usually use Microsoft Server Backup. It's free. It's built into Windows. And I back up my domain controller with Microsoft Server Backup backup. Then I have an external backup system that backs up all of the other elements combined. I also use Veeam installed on my host and my parent to back up my VMs. On a physical server, use RAID 1 for C drive, RAID 6 or RAID 10 for AD. So in my home lab, this is what I run one of my AD servers on. It's always on, extremely low power, fully x64 compatible with UEFI and secure boot, low cost, Windows Server Core on it, easy to physically secure. Not recommended for a business or internet. Enterprise. Some other domain controller considerations that you need to think about is that domain controllers need to have a static IP address. Then all of your computers in your domain must use the domain controller's IP address as their DNS server. Typically, each LAN, local area network, will have its own DC. So here's an example of my client's 
and this is their IP4 configuration. And you notice under IP4 DNS servers, they have a 192.168.0.230. That's the IP address of one of my domain controllers. Anytime you have a PC on a domain, it must use the DC as its DNS server. Domain controllers will always have DNS installed. This allows everyone in the domain to find the resources that they need. Let's take a quick look. I'm using Active Directory Users and Computers, which is a tool that I can use to look into Active Directory database. And it shows me a structure. Now be careful, this is a database. It's not a set of folders and subfolders like a hard drive, even though it shows relationships that look like folders and subfolders on a hard drive. Think about your registry. Your registry shows what looks like in regedit folders in relationship to subfolders, but it's not. It's trying to make a database more understandable to the IT pro. They're not folders and subfolders like your hard drive. This is a database, not a hard drive. We have some special icons. One, this icon is what we know as a container. And notice it has an icon like just like the one below it under computers. But notice this one under domain controllers, home lab laptop, home lab PC. Notice their icons are different. These are organizational units. These are O use. The ones that have a plain icon are known as containers. Now I took Windows Admin Center and I went out and I looked at my Active Directory just like I did with the other tool, Active Directory Users and Computers. Now I'm using Windows Admin Center. I've selected my domain controller, Win2016 DC1, and I've chosen to look at my Active Directory on this domain controller. And if you'll notice, I see a lot of the same objects in this database that I just saw with Active Directory users and computers. Notice it shows me that this computer is a container. This domain controller is an OU. This home lab laptop is an OU. So I have container, OU, and those are going to be very important distinctions that we understand. Now, Active Directory is a single file called ntds.dit. Now, I've got a screenshot up here, and it has both Active Directory users and computers showing you the database. And then down below is Explorer, where I'm looking at the hard drive. And I'm in a folder on my E drive called NTDS. And this file right here, ntds.dit is my Active Directory database. This is a tool that allows me to see it in a visual fashion. Again, inside Active Directory, we have containers and they have an icon like this. You cannot delete containers, which is good. Then we have organizational units, which have an icon that looks like this. And this is home lab laptop. And this is where I put all my home laptops in this OU. This is important because when I apply group policy objects, GPOs, restrictions, control over objects in my Active Directory, I have to put GPOs on an OU only. I cannot put an, a GPO on a container. Now notice this wizard dialog box. When you install Active Directory on your server, you're going to get this option. Where do you want to store your Active Directory database? Where do you want to store your log files? And where do you want to put your sysvol folder? This is where I choose to put it on a separate drive. Now in our NTDS folder are critical Active Directory files. When we look at any file with the extension of .chk, this is a checkpoint file. Checkpoint files are very important. They're commonly used in transactional database systems to keep track of what log entries have been committed to the database. This is extremely important should you want to recover from a crash. Log files are transactional logs used to record changes in Active Directory. And .edb are temporary files also used to track transactions. Now, Active Directory uses a database engine called JetBlue. It's called an Index Sequential Access Method, ISAM. Exchange uses this 
database engine, a Windows Server Branch Cache uses it, and Windows Desktop Search. I recently did a video on Windows Desktop Search. So if you'd like more information on JetBlue, take a look at that video. Because we have more than one domain controller in a domain, maybe three, maybe four, replication or keeping these databases in sync is very important. In keeping these databases together and in sync, Microsoft uses a multi-master model. Nobody has a higher authority than the other. They're all domain controllers. They use what's called a pull replication. It keeps them in sync. Pull requests are made every 15 minutes. All traffic is encrypted between domain controllers. And there's a feature called KCC, Knowledge Consistency Checker, that verifies all this data that's moving across domain controllers to make sure that data is accurate. Active Directory depends on a number of technologies. Let's take a look at them. We've already mentioned one feature that Active Directory cannot function without, and that's DNS. Another one is RPC. This is a protocol built into Windows. You use it all the time on your clients, your Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows servers. RPC is using all the time. RPC allows a process on a server to communicate flawlessly with a process on the client and vice versa. So it's a very important protocol. LDAP is a set of rules, it's a protocol, that allows applications to talk to the Active Directory database. And Kerberos is the authentication method. So we can authenticate an individual or a computer or an application and trust that they are who they say they are. Now for many of you who want to build your first Active Directory, I want to explain how I named my Active Directory. It's not intuitive. When I purchased my domain, techsavvyproductions.com, I applied it to a website that is hosted by square.com. So that DNS name, top level DNS name, was already a part of square.com's IP address that represents my website. So when I wanted to choose a DNS name for my Active Directory, it had to be a subdomain of techsavvyproductions.com. So I chose homelab.techsavvyproductions.com and that became the DNS name of my Active Directory. I couldn't use techsavvyproductions.com because it was already associated with square.com's IP address for my website. Now to be sure, this is not the process nor the strategy that you would take with a thoughtfully laid out business strategy, small business strategy. You would incorporate your AD and your website carefully so that they could share the same top level domain. But many companies start with a website and then grow to the point that they need Active Directory and so they fall into this category. To be clear, our presentation on Active Directory is a fundamental or foundational level. Here's an example of the complexity of Active Directory. This is the step-by-step -step communication process that goes on between a computer who is not on the domain and joining it to a domain controller. It's quite complex. So once I join the domain, how do I access files, folders, and applications? Well, you must authenticate. Kerberos is used by Active Directory for authentication. It uses a non-intuitive method. For example, you go to the domain controller and you request a ticket granting ticket and you get a session key. You're giving authority and authentication credentials. And with those, you can go to resources on the domain and access folders, files, and of course, then NTFS permissions kick in. So there's a complex set of authentication. And then on our servers, there's NTFS. All of that combined with group policies provide a layered approach to security. There's lots of cool Active Directory tools. Microsoft gives the IT Pro lots of Active Directory tools. There's Server Manager on each of your Windows server. There's Active Directory Admin Center, which is built into most of your server products. There's RStat tools. We'll look at those. There's Windows Admin Center, which is where Microsoft is trying to push us all towards. And of course, PowerShell, a tool that you will find yourself often 
reaching for and using to control and secure your network is going to be group policy. Group policy is one of the most powerful tools in Active Directory. Now, Microsoft's vision for Active Directory is premise-based. You have act domain controllers with Active Directory on those domain controllers. Then you connect to Azure, and then you have Azure Active Directory. That is Microsoft's present vision.